Hello, everybody around the world. My name is Matthew Vuzjan. I am the head of corporate communications in Vibons. As most of you already know, Vibons is a San Francisco based startup focusing on development initiative, products, and organizational learning and communications. Our recent projects are about personalization of video, micro learning, and a space learning platform, what we call Journey. How about that? But our topic is different today. We will be talking about Swisscom's new leading initiative. And I'm so excited to have the opportunity to introduce our guest speaker, Patrick. Patrick Van Hoof. Well, welcome, Patrick, to our show. Patrick Van Hoof is the head of learning and development at Swisscom Enterprise Customers, also having a Master of Science in General Management. He's the Learning Innovation Champion of the Year 2017 in Swisscom. He's an expert in synthesizing personnel, management, and operation decisions to meet requirements and align goals with values and visions of his company. One year ago, Patrick and his team launched the Airbnb of corporate learning, a social learning marketplace where employees learn from each other and teach each other. Now, this is something that is most fascinating. Now, 5,000 employees at Swisscom Enterprise customers are the ones who decide, create, and execute corporate learning. How's that sounding now? So, okay, Patrick, welcome. Welcome to webinar. How are you? Thank you for having me, Mert. I'm doing great, and I'm very much looking forward to our webinar today. Okay, that's great. So how does the system work, Patrick? So can you tell me um, how will reveal uh, to us the details about the exciting social learning project? So actually, um, we have the vision of being the Airbnb of learning and development. And uh, with the Airbnb of learning and development, uh, we mean a social learning marketplace. So inside my team, we don't have any trainers and we do not uh, create any training content. Instead, we are enabling the 5,000 people um, at Enterprise customers to teach and learn from each other. So um, how do you define uh, so social learning? Let's start from there for our first question. How about that? So for, for me, social learning is um, uh, learning about uh, or learning about the stuff that you need for your job um, when you need it uh, from your peers. Um, actually, your peers are always the ones who know best about what your daily problems are, about um, uh, the stuff that uh, that works, and they are the ones that also have the the, the credibility when they are teaching somebody. So right. with social learning. We are not only talking about uh, informal learning, but also about uh, formal learning and, and really connecting uh, all of our employees uh, amongst each other and get that uh, knowledge exchange flowing. So uh, that, that sort of like knowledge from everybody and uh, getting together and sharing this knowledge to uh, all the employees all together, right? Yeah, exactly. So um, actually the, the, the first thing that I say to uh, all of the line managers and uh, all of my uh, employees is that um, please don't learn anything and please don't teach anything. Often um, uh, a lot of uh, corporate uh, learning is uh, being done just to, to tick the box. And people are, have uh, stopped to ask the question, why are we actually learning something? And when is it effective to, to learn something? And for me, it's uh, very important that uh, people ask themselves, well, the, the, the processes and the tools and the incentives that we have and, and are in place, are they already correctly aligned and are they already um, fully optimized? Because most often, if you are learning some new knowledge and you cannot apply that uh, directly, then there is no reason for learning that new knowledge. And so the impact is often much bigger when people look at the, uh, the tools, processes, and incentives first, and when that is in place, then you can start to teach people additional knowledge to improve their performance. Oh, that is so great here. I wish we had that in global education and uh, youth-wise as well, right? Uh, that would be nice. That would be a topic, but nice, yeah? <laughs> okay, please continue. 
So um, how does this uh, social learning marketplace actually uh, work? Well, we've got uh, two market sites and uh, anybody of you who ever used uh, Airbnb um, might be familiar with, the, uh, with their business model. So on one side, we've got uh, our employees and uh, what is important for our employees? Well, they, they want to learn from each other. Uh, they want to achieve their annual goals. They want to secure also their employability. And for us as a company, it's important that we can differentiate ourselves on the market through our employees. So Swisscom is, um, is a quality brand and uh, also the uh, quality pricing. So that means that we need to go the extra mile for our customer so that our customer really perceives this value. And on the, the other side of, uh, of our market, um, uh, we've got training content. So this can be any type of content. It can be peer-to-peer -peer training. It can be classical one-to-many training, uh, role-based, theme-based, uh, internal or, or external content. And we are bringing those two parts together. That's great to hear. Okay, so tell us about more, more about the Swiss Telecom Social Learning Project. So um, what is it that we actually do to bring these two uh, together? Well, uh, our first goal is to uh, enable a winning spirit. What um, uh, many of us um, around the world see that uh, with the increasing speed of technology and changes uh, that are happening, people are starting to get very insecure about, do I still have a job tomorrow? Uh, us as a company, we've been transforming uh, the way we've been uh, generating our revenues over the past uh, 10 years so significantly that about 40% of our turnover today, these products did not even exist 10 years ago. That also means, you know, uh, a lot of people um, are wondering, well, are my skills that I have today still relevant for tomorrow? Yeah, so, 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 so what we're trying to do with this is that even though it's not uh, our responsibility, we want to take that fear uh, away. And we want to empower people that they can discover for themselves again. Well, if I cannot secure my job in the traditional uh, way of thinking, how can I uh, secure my future then? The other thing that um, we are doing is um, we are working very close with uh, existing expert communities uh, that, we, uh, that we have. So inside my business unit, we've got about 5,000 people in the whole Swisscom group. We've got uh, 17,000. And there are about 15 uh, very active uh, expert communities. And rather than getting those expert communities come to my platform, I am taking my learning and development knowledge and implementing that into those expert communities. And the whole idea there is that um, we increase the knowledge exchange that is happening inside those expert communities. And with that, those uh, communities are starting to become more interesting for employees to join. The impact on the business is going to be better. And through that, we also learn what is relevant for those expert communities. So this is giving us hints on what we can improve to the overall learning experience. And the last two things like enabling business, um, uh, business performance and uh, increasing the continuous uh, learning behavior of, uh, of people, but these are the, um, uh, the, the business drivers. And so this is also referring a little bit back to what I was saying at the, the beginning that I recommend um, uh, nobody to, to, to learn or to create a, a training is that anything that you learn in, inside a corporate environment needs to have a clear goal. And that clear goal is that it um, contributes to achieving your, uh, uh, your company targets. So this also means that we need to sensibilize the uh, line managers a lot about uh, where and how corporate learning is actually uh, applicable and helpful for contributing to, to their business success. Okay. So um, can you tell me the challenges while implementing a social learning marketplace? I mean, do you have any uh, do's and don'ts? Perhaps I can uh, demonstrate that uh, a little bit with some graphics. This is what our social learning uh, marketplace is uh, looking like. Um, it's uh, very much uh, based like a, uh, a Netflix uh, interface. 
So for me, one of the key successes uh, has been that uh, the user experience, it needs to be on par with uh, LinkedIn Learning, uh, with uh, Udemy, with uh, YouTube, with Google, um, because these are actually my competitors. And if I don't offer a similar user experience uh, as them, then people will not even come to, to my platform and uh, they will not even think about starting to, to sharing their knowledge uh, through this uh, platform. One of the things that um, we've been, been trying out is, um, is a gamification system. So we've got uh, different sets of uh, badges um, where we've got a curiosity award. So we've got uh, four levels for each type of badge. Uh, where we engage people in asking questions, uh, in sharing content, uh, to create content, and for actually uh, learning on the platform. Um, before we were trying, we were testing out different types of uh, badges and also with uh, reward uh, systems. And when we spoke with our employees, uh, we got the feedback that yeah, they didn't uh, care that much for uh, for for getting money or uh, for being able to to book fancy holidays or or, or anything of uh, of that sort. But the thing they do like is that if they reach a certain amount of points, that we as a team, uh, as a learning and development team, pass by their team meeting and organize like a short breakfast and uh, give some updates from uh, from our side. So this is what we are starting to uh, to do now, and the first responses of that have been actually uh, quite positive. Some of the questions that uh, that I've been getting is that, uh, well, how do you manage the the, the quality of the content? And uh, the quality of the the content is something that I cannot determine. Uh, the reason for that is that, from a didactical point of view, I can say yes or no. The, the, the quality uh, might be good, but that still doesn't mean that uh, you can actually use it and that it improves your uh, your skills to do your job uh, better. And so the whole quality uh, aspect uh, of this is being determined um, uh, through this uh, star uh, rating that you can see here on the screen. And it's our users that are determining uh, the quality um, uh, the quality rating. So whenever a course has got three, four, or five stars, um, we believe that yeah, it's it's okay. Whenever we see that there's one or two stars, we immediately take the course offline, and then we start to investigate. So we go through the course, uh, we see all the uh, the data that is behind there, what is working, what is not working. And we also interview uh, the people who have attended that course to figure out what is it um, that you didn't like. From that, we actually know um, what it is that we can improve. And um, we then contact the, the content producer and ask them if they want to, to, to improve. So this way, we actually find that um, people uh, start to appreciate the content. Um, also, the amount of bad content is is reduced, um, and uh, and we're getting positive feedback on uh, on this approach. Something else that people are finding um, uh, or are often wondering is, well, how can you actually motivate people to start sharing their knowledge, and and how do you enable them? Because a lot of subject matter experts they um, they're very good at that what they do, but they are very bad at explaining what they are doing. So for that, we have uh, created a, a trainer handbook uh, in the form of an e-learning. And so within 30 minutes, um, you get the very basics on how to create either a classroom training, uh, a webinar, or an e-learning. Yeah. That's something great that uh, you just uh, discussed. Well, what kind of formats do you focus? I mean, um, e-learning or videos or blogs? So um, when we created this, this handbook, it was more uh, thinking more about how can you enable 5,000 people to easily create a blended learning approach. And so then you also need to consider what type of tools can you uh, use for that. Um, you cannot really start training people in making f fancy animations uh, and so on. So it needs to be quite basic and um, it needs to be very cost efficient. So with all of these things in mind, we decided on uh, six formats. 
So the first one being PowerPoint. It might not be pretty, but it's something that uh, everybody knows and uh, everybody is uh, using already uh, today. The second thing that we are, um, the second format is that we have uh, webinars uh, where we use Skype for Business together with PowerPoint. Um, the third format is a workshop. Everybody knows how to organize a meeting room. The uh, fourth one being a uh, smoothie, uh, and this movie is um, is a short movie that you completely produce and publish uh, with your mobile uh, with your mobile phone. So it takes about uh, one hour to produce a 60 second uh, video. It's uh, fantastic because it's uh, authentic um, and has a much better impact. Um, the fifth format is uh, is a screencast. So you just record your desktop, um, you do a voiceover, and you can publish this uh, video. And the sixth format is uh, is a new format uh, that we recently introduced. And we have something that is called uh, Kickbox, which is um, uh, which is an uh, innovation uh, project. So after people have learned something we recommend them to uh, do a kickbox project where they take their knowledge and they create a business innovation idea they get 20 percent uh, of their time to work out this idea and also to find an internal business sponsor that will then uh, promote uh, their idea yeah so so these are the the six formats that uh, that we are using out of these six formats, uh, which has the best engagement um, space, or, or um, let's put it, which format has the highest engagement, as you see? So um, we we started uh, doing some some data analytics on on the platform, and we were trying to find out if any of these formats were. Um, uh, having any impact on the completion rate of the course and what we found that uh, video actually has uh, no positive or negative impact on if people are uh, completing courses um, for uh, HTML sites uh, that you can build into those uh, courses uh, so just plain text we found that the more plain text you you have in there maybe with some images um, the bigger the negative impact is on the uh, course completion rate. Um, also for, um, uh, for putting in surveys, uh, the more surveys and, and questionnaires or tests that, that you're putting in, the lower the um, uh, completion rate of a course is. I can give a short example here of um, uh, what we have uh, been doing with this uh, smoothie format. So. Uh, Actually, a whole department, they needed to, to learn a new process. Um, and this process was called uh, SPSA. Um, and as part of the learning journey, uh, every employee was asked to create a smoothie by themselves where they had to, uh, to explain this process to all of their colleagues. And we found out that uh, this approach um, is actually the most uh, effective for getting people in front of a camera and to, to, to share their knowledge. So there needs to be a, a top-down uh, driver for um, creating videos uh, like this. That is actually uh, quite in contrast to content uh, or formal training content that is being produced uh, by the business. So there, there doesn't need to be um, a top-down driver. This can also be just people initiating um, uh, content development uh, by themselves. And um, uh, with this um, SPSA pitch, um, we've got very positive uh, feedback. You can also see the amount of uh, star ratings. Um, the majority is uh, four or, or five stars. Uh, and people, uh, they did feel a little bit uh, awkward about it um, at first, um, uh, but they they really appreciated uh, this uh, this new way of learning. So, what do we uh, do to motivate people to not only uh, be a consumer but also to become uh, an active uh, trainer and also to to engage them more in the whole gamification approach? So everybody gets uh, their own dashboard where on the top they see um, all of the stuff that 
they are learning or that um, or tasks that they still need to do uh, to acquire knowledge and just below that there they can see what their trainer tasks are so because every employee can take both roles uh, every employee also has got this uh, this dashboard and through the development badges this is how we try to engage the mode uh, engage the employees to uh, to learn more and to, to share more of their knowledge so perhaps um, uh, something that i can share with are some uh, some numbers on the uh, blue line, you can see the amount of uh, active learners that we have uh, per month. So we launched in uh, June 2017, and uh, in the first month, um, uh, we had about uh, 183 uh, active learners. So these are 183 people that uh, log into our platform and actively learn something. And so as you can see, there's a um, nice trend that is uh, going up. Um, towards uh, May last year, where uh, or May this year, excuse me, um, of uh, nearly 700. In June, we uh, reached uh, 855. And what is interesting to see is the uh, dip in uh, February. And uh, in February, um, we had to uh, announce um, uh, job reductions. Um, but uh, February is also a very typical month in Switzerland uh, where people are going on uh, on holidays. So there you could, uh, could, could really see an impact on the, um, on the learning behavior. Then on the blue line, you can see the amount of uh, content that uh, we have on our platform. So when we started with the platform, uh, my team, we had um, uh, uploaded and created a, about 200 uh, trainings. So this is a mixture of uh, e-learning, uh, webinar, and uh, and classroom. And uh, from the 1st of June, we did not produce any content uh, anymore. So uh, within 12 months, the business uh, generated about um, uh, 160 to 180 trainings uh, by themselves. The next question that I often get, well, that content that is produced, um, is it actually uh, uh, better? Uh, people are, are always very skeptical about uh, user-generated uh, content. And so what we do is uh, in, in every training course that we have on our platform, we have a uh, feedback uh, form at the end where we ask uh, three questions. So is the, the, the topic and the, the content, was it addressed clearly? Um, is this uh, training uh, useful for my everyday work? And would I recommend this training to, to others? So when you look at the uh, light blue line, this is all of the content that was produced before the 1st of June last year um, and produced by the uh, previous training department. And then in the dark blue line, you see all of the employee produced uh, training content. And there you can clearly see that uh, actually employee uh, produced training content um, has less uh, unsatisfied users and 10% um, uh, more highly satisfied uh, uh, users. And that is uh, something that uh, for me is a very strong confirmation of that, uh, that this uh, social learning marketplace approach is, uh, is successful. So some of the um, key challenges that um, actually faced over the uh, past year um, was uh, first off, I heard from a lot of people that uh, user-generated uh, training is, uh, is impossible, um, not only for, uh, for quality reasons, but also for motivational uh, reasons. And so one of the ways that uh, I motivate people to also start uh, sharing their knowledge is that um, I also I, I ask them a very simple question. For what do you need to explain at least five or ten times each month? And uh, most of them they they find something and say, okay, well, you know, you just create a small training, a small e-learning uh, on that uh, topic. You publish that on um, on the Ant Academy, and uh, then you got rid of this question. And so, it's a very uh, a small effort uh, most of the time, 
then uh, then they try it out and they can immediately see the benefits uh, for themselves because all of a sudden they don't need to explain the same thing again they can just uh, send the link to the uh, e-learning that they made and um, and and this way they can immediately uh, feel the effect of uh, what training can can have as a positive in, uh, impact uh, for them um, something that I also got from um, our uh, HR department is that we have um, one learning management system for the whole company. Um, and this management system, uh, Learn LMS, um, we bought it um, a, a few years ago. Um, and when I had this, uh, this vision for a social learning marketplace, um, it was uh, impossible with the current um, uh, or with that existing uh, LMS to actually deliver a, uh, a very good user experience that is on par with uh, LinkedIn Learning or uh, or Google or, or YouTube. And this was for me uh, the main trigger to search for, for a new solution where I actually could get uh, a great user experience, not only from uh, from an end user point of view, but also where uh, you have got a great user experience for creating trainings on the platform. Something that I, I heard from only 10% of the line managers uh, though, was um, my employees don't have time to, to create trainings. So for implementing this approach, um, I went to, to a lot of team meetings where I introduced the, the, the concept and uh, throughout the whole organization, on average, I had about 10% uh, of the line managers uh, telling me uh, exactly this. And so for anything that is new, I always expect about 30% uh, of the people to say, no, it's not uh, possible. So that was already uh, a very positive, um, uh, positive re result for me. And with those line managers that were actually uh, that, uh, that negative, um, I would always spend some additional time and see if we can could do a, a pilot project uh, together with them so that they could be convinced that the amount of time to create a training is actually not that much for it to be still uh, very effective. Another generic um, perception, I, I would say, is that um, uh, something that I heard from, from the business uh, a lot is that uh, trainings are, are just a cost factor. And so why are trainings actually perceived as a cost factor? I think that's mostly because there's, actually, there's no active uh, follow-up. So a line manager, he wants uh, his employees to be trained. He sends them off to a training course, they come back, and then he expects that uh, that's what they have learned. They are also actively applying this in their day-to-day -day job. Because the line manager, he did not have to invest any resources at the, or his, his personal resources to get these people trained. There's also very little motivation for him to then follow up. And when people are not following up on that what is actually being learned, well, uh, the knowledge that, uh, that you have gained uh, within one month, um, it's it's reduced to about forty uh, percent. I think we we all know this um, uh, forgetting curve. And so, with the mechanism that we have uh, today, it's actually the business themselves that they need to to make a small business case. Well, are we going to to train people? And if they come uh, to the decision, yes, we do want to. Uh, we do want to, to train people because we believe that um, giving them new knowledge will actually uh, improve our business success. Um, they are automatically triggered by this uh, resource investment that they have to do to then also follow up. And what I've seen in the, the, the past year that um, uh, the perception of what training can do for business success um, has uh, uh, has significantly changed. 
So Patrick, you actually told us all about the social learning, about your country, uh, about your uh, company, Swiss Telecom Social Learning Project, and what are the challenges while implementing a social learning marketplace and do's and don'ts. Um, just before we uh, um, get into those questions, why did you prefer launching a new learning platform instead of using your current LMS? So um, actually the, uh, the, the current LMS, um, it had a, a very uh, limited uh, user experience to, to, to say it like that and uh, it was something that was um, uh, being managed uh, internally so we bought that solution and we continued to develop that solution uh, together with the supplier and there, actually, I don't believe that uh, developing software should be a core competency of an L&D team. So my perception to that is I need to have an, any type of IT solution. It should be cloud-based. It should be uh, software as a service. And I should be simply like a consumer where I define a few settings. And then the thing should be operational. I, I don't want to bother with uh, difficult um, uh, releases, product updates. All of that should be taken care of um, uh, by this uh, provider. And um, that's why it's also very important to 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 have a provider that um, shares the um, uh, the vision of the future. All right. Okay. So, what will be your next step in this project? So uh, the next step is that uh, now that the business can see that there is actually an, um, uh, an impact uh, on the business, I want to make the, um, uh, the link between training and uh, measurable business impact. So there's um, a pilot that I'm starting uh, from uh, August um, with four of the main business units um, inside enterprise uh, customers where we are going to um, uh, pilot a, a new approach on developing competitive advantages through learning and development. Um, the way that we want to, to do that is that um, we will be triggered by a business KPI that is uh, underperforming. And if the business agrees that uh, L&D can, uh, can do something with that, this is the point that, um, that we start to, to investigate. So we will do um, a critical mistake uh, analysis, uh, try to figure out if, uh, if something goes wrong along the line. If we then still find that learning and development can actually have a positive uh, uh, impact, we then have our design challenge. And from that, we will start with uh, data analytics to identify uh, middle and top performers. From that, we want to see what is actually the, uh, uh, the delta between those, uh, those two performance uh, groups. So when it comes to cognitive um, flexibility, uh, available skills, uh, motivation, and, and anything else. Once we know that difference, uh, then we can create a pilot training together with the business, um, which we can then test out on two, two groups with a simple A-B testing. And when we see that um, uh, the group that, that gets this uh, pilot approach actually has a um, uh, improved uh, business performance on those existing business KPIs, then we can scale that. And otherwise, we continue with um, uh, uh, multiple iterations until we see that, um, and that there is a business impact. So with that, we want to learn until the end of uh, 2019, how can we link learning and development with business uh, success? I see. I see. Okay. So tell me, how was the mobile experience of the platform? How was it? And uh, do people prefer mobile or desktop while getting courses? In, in uh, Switzerland is um, on one side a very uh, innovative uh, country, uh, and on the other side they are also very uh, traditional. And 
what I found in the um, in our analytics is that uh, the majority of um, our employees they learn between um, Monday and Friday, uh, eight in the morning until six in the evening. Now, Swisscom is a very uh, advanced uh, company, and uh, all of our uh, employees they've got a smartphone. So you would expect that a lot of people are are, ex uh, are accessing the um, uh, the content uh, through mobile, but that what we actually found is that the majority still prefers the um, uh, the desktop learning environment. The learning experience that we have on uh, on the mobile through this platform, uh, I have to say, it's uh, it's very good. Um, also, the nice thing from a production uh, point of view is that you produce your content once and it's immediately available on desktop, uh, mobile and, and, and tablet. So there we don't really see any issues with the, the, the user experience, but it's more about the user behavior and starting to educate people to also use their mobile devices more. Well, I guess there are no further questions. So, well, thank you so much for attending. So nice to meet you. Uh, well, see you in our next webinar next month, hopefully. All right, thank you. So um, have a nice day to everyone.